Fouad Senora. Pleasure having you on the Newsmakers. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Welcome to Istanbul. Thank you. Let me begin by asking you about some of the latest news coming out of Lebanon or about Lebanon from the mouth of Benjamin Netanyahu, the Israeli Prime Minister. He says that when your foreign minister gave other dignitaries a tour of the country, it was basically a Hezbollah show. They hid away the weapons and that they are key weapons in places like the airport even that Hezbollah hid while the government gave a tour to show that the country is clean and that there are no Hezbollah weapons. Is that true? Well, let me start by saying that uh, Hassan Nasrallah, he himself said that we have arranged to have rockets of high precision in his own words. And uh, he did not hide that. Now, whether actually, as Netanyahu claimed, that these weapons and these rockets are in a place near the airport and within civilian uh, quarters, I don't know. Mm. Actually, uh, on the one hand, the plaintiff has to really come up with the proofs. Mm. And Netanyahu has to come up with the proofs. On the other hand, the Minister of Foreign Affairs had a tour with a number of, of, of uh, ambassadors and the like. They went into areas and said uh, that there is nothing. Actually, in this sense, what I really uh, see it, that uh, regarding these particular positions for having or not having uh, 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 rockets, I think Israel has to come with the proofs into that. But what, and what actually Netanyahu is meaning out of this, actually, these threats, is to uh, really uh, blackmail Lebanon on the one hand and try to divert attention from what Israel is doing. Actually, is Israel is the aggressor. And not Hassan Nasrallah in this, in this particular thing, you see. Israel is the aggressor. Israel is doing all sorts of things in order to uh, really, uh, uh, first of all, not only Lebanon, I mean, attacking Lebanon, and because over the past 30 years, there are more than six invasions that Israel committed against Lebanon. Besides that, Israel, what is, what is doing actually in, 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 in Palestine and in Jerusalem in particular, further, I mean, following to what actually uh, President, uh, uh, Obama, uh, President Trump has done in terms of uh, transferring the the uh, the American embassy from Tel Aviv into into Jerusalem to indicate that there is no more cause for for the Palestinians and there is nothing actually called Jerusalem and actually as being the capital of of the of the state of Palestine, together with what the Israelis have been doing regarding the Jewishness of the state, and uh, I mean all these measures are in fact wanted. By, by Netanyahu and by, by Israel in order to divert attention from what is going on. The problem is there. Actually, in order to uh, really cover up this thing, they are creating some of these issues. I'm not claiming that there are no rockets and no high precision. Mm -hmm. Actually, this is something mentioned by, by uh, Hassan Nasrallah himself, you see. And this is causing some, some problems, actually, for, for Lebanon, which can, we can really talk about it. Right. So talking about resolving things and justice, the Rafiq Hariri trial yes. has wrapped up. We probably only expect a verdict next year. But we look at this and we see that the four accused weren't even in the dock. We see a lot of criticism of the entire tribunal. Do you think that the result will bring about a semblance of justice and closure for the Lebanese people? Yes. You put your finger on a very important topic, which is justice. And the, the, the Middle East, actually, and the Arab world has been suffering from the lack of justice on, on several fronts. The Arab-Israeli conflict, on the one hand, the problem that has been really simmering for quite a lot in terms of, 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 of oppressive regimes against the people, of, of, of the region against the Arab in, in so many countries, whether it, is, it was in Iraq, in Syria, in Yemen, in Libya, 
I mean, with these oppressive regimes that really led to, 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 further, to further instability in the region. Now we come actually to the trial uh, against those who really committed the crime of, uh, 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 of killing Rafiq Hariri. Uh, in fact, uh, in, in, in here, one has to really take in consideration a very important thing that Lebanon, because of its diversity, its freedom, freedom of speech, and uh, in, 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 enjoy, in, in enjoying relatively much higher level of freedom than any other Arab country. In fact, uh, uh, the killing of Rafiq Hariri is not the first incident that we suffered from. Lebanon suffered from the, uh, uh, the, the killing of three prime ministers mm -hmm. and an attempt against a fourth one and killing two presidents and a number of ministers, a number of, of journalists and the clergies and so on. And all these crimes have been really left there with no, uh, with no uh, uh, let's say, a special court uh, that can really uh, handle. And uh, in fact, uh, until the, 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 the case of uh, uh, Rafiq Hariri. And I believe what is that uh, uh, this, I mean, uh, we, we have seen the latest rounds of the, of the tribunal, and there are certain really pointing fingers mm. against Hezbollah. Mm. But if it comes out and they yes. say Hezbollah did it, I think at the direction of Syria or Iran or Syria fine, and Iran, fine. Nasrallah is going to say, go to hell, don't play with fire, we're not cooperating. How is that going to bring justice or closure next year? Let me tell you something. First of all, it is very important that the court has to come up with its verdict mm -hmm. because justice has to, to really be known and and the and the what really happened has to be known and uh, justice has to be finally uh, be uh, be uh, really expressing itself in the form of the verdict of the court which actually is coming up with lots of of let's say proofs it's not uh, these evidences are, let's say, in thousands. Right. It's not something. But I'm giving you a political reality. I know. I know. I after think, it comes out. I think after it comes out. How do you let do me, it? Let me put it this way. Mm. The first thing, let it come out. Okay. And then we will look into things, how it should really be handled. Mm -hmm. I don't think that it is, it is really helpful to start talking about whether not whether to really come up with a verdict or not. We should have a verdict. And then we will see how to really handle the matter to the best interest of the country and the best interest of the people of Lebanon. For those who look at your country not as a sovereign state, but as, at the moment, a refugee-absorbing country that is just a proxy battleground between Iran on the one hand and Saudi Arabia on the other, your response is? Well, Leb Lebanon definitely suffers from, uh, let's say, problems within and problems of the region and the world. Uh, and, and actually, uh, to, to some extent, Lebanon suffered a great deal uh, and being penalized for uh, its, uh, its uh, good sides, uh, much more than for its bad, bad, bad uh, let's say, aspects. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, for, the, for, for, the, for the good aspects of it, uh, being open, being uh, tolerant, being uh, uh, diverse and so on, and with a high degree of freedom, freedom of speech, uh, we, we, suffered, we suffered a great deal because of regional pressures and so on. Now, actually, we have a situation in which uh, Lebanon is suffering from the presence of of uh, Hezbollah on the one hand, that is really uh, having weapons and that is competing with the with the state uh, for its its uh, really dominance over the over all parts of the country, and as you know, it's, the, this con this situation cannot continue, uh, and we know that uh, there are some reasons that has to do with the with the continuation of the Arab Arab Israeli conflict. But we have something else that, at the same time, which is the interference of Iran. 
uh, in the affairs of, of Lebanon, not only Lebanon, actually. I mean, Iran has been confessing and stating it very right. clearly that they are interfering in the, in the affairs of Syria, Iraq, Lebanon, and, and, and Yemen. So can I give you the other side of the coin? Yes. Do you have a prime minister who's not totally independent, who's controlled by Mohammed bin Salman? Well, uh, you see, uh, this, 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 uh, this aspect of the situation, I think that that, that is something that uh, uh, the page has been turned. Uh, uh, again, I mean, and it's no longer actually something to, to, be, to be taken in consideration. It was a mistake, and I think this is something that has to be turned aside. But what is there, actually, there is a, a, a relationship that has prevailed over, the, over so many decades of good relations between Saudi Arabia and Lebanon. And Saudi Arabia is an Arab country, and uh, uh, Saudi Arabia has proven uh, over the past decades how, how it has been helpful and supportive to Lebanon and its independence. And as you know, we are really enjoying now the peace that was really uh, done uh, in, in Taif in 1989, and when which the Taif agreement was approved and really later on was legalized uh, and put part of the Constitution. Certainly, they brought, they helped they bring brought peace help, help, help. And, and the civil war. But yes. I mean, if I can ask it as bluntly as possible, yeah. Iran controls Hezbollah, which controls large parts of society. I wouldn't say the state. In a way, it's competing with the state. It's a part of the state. It's, it's in politics. It On is, the other side of the coin, yeah. your successor, Saad Hariri, the son of Rafiq Hariri, is he controlled by Saudi Arabia? No. I don't think I any mean, the word that is controlled by Saudi Arabia. I mean, there are lots of commonalities <clears throat> between Lebanon and Saudi Arabia. And there are lots of, let's say, support mm -hmm. uh, to the good relations between Lebanon and Saudi Arabia. Uh, uh, the relationship with Iran, we want to have a healthy relationship with Iran, in which there is no intervention in the domestic affairs of, of Lebanon. And as you know, if you want to compare, let's say, and it's, it's, not, it's not good to compare, in fact, because this is an Arab country and this is a non-Arab country. Mm -hmm. And there are lots of common interests between Lebanon and, and, uh, and Iran. As you know, there are hundreds of thousands of people who, Lebanese, who work in Saudi Arabia and, and areas of, and, and many, many countries in the region. This tells the, 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 the basic common interest mm -hmm. between Lebanon and the Gulf, and particularly with Saudi Arabia. What I believe is that uh, the relationship with Iran, we have, Iran is, is, is a neighbor, and we have to recognize this neighbor, and we have to extend the hand to Iran to build a good friendship, but on the basis of non-intervention, and on the basis of what, not the theory that has been brought by, by Khomeini at one time, which is the, the, the Wilayat al-Faqih, across national frontiers, which really gives the, the, the supreme leader in Iran the right to intervene in the affairs of certain groups of people within right. countries against the, against the sovereignty of the state. So what I really want to say is that Saudi Arabia is an Arab country. Saudi Arabia has proven over the years that it has been supportive to Lebanon and, and, to, and to its affairs. And the one that rescued Lebanon uh, in 1989, on the one hand, and at the same time, in so many invasions, actually, that, that took place. You see, Lebanon has been subjected to several invasions in 78 from Israel and in 82. And in 93, and in 96, and in 206. And, and, 206. and had it not been for the support of Saudi Arabia, we would have been in a really miserable situation. Lebanon has to really have good relations with its neighbors and in, in, with, with its friends. Iran can be a good friend to Lebanon, but it has to confess that this cannot continue, this situation of interfering in the affairs of Lebanon and in the affairs of many other Arab countries. It, it, is, it is a shame, actually, when some Iranian leaders say that we have a say, a controlling say, in the affairs of what's going on in Iraq and Syria, Lebanon, and Yemen. And this cannot really be accepted and cannot continue. 
So this is not wise, actually, to put Iran and Saudi Arabia on the same footing. But at the same time, it has to be really said that some real effort that Iran cannot continue bleeding as it is now, actually, with its domestic problems on the one hand, with, it, with its relationship with the uh, countries of the region, with its relationship with so many countries around the world, and with the sanctions that are being imposed on Iran because of its policies and its intervention in the region, so on. This cannot continue. It's not in the interest of Iran. Definitely, the Iranians themselves, they have to really uh, know what, what is their interest and what's not in their interest. I am saying from a, per from a person and a country that is suffering from the intervention of Iran in the affairs of Lebanon and the affairs of the, of the region. And that's why I think the best thing is that there should be a, an, a, first of all, a, an awareness that this continuous bleeding and this, 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 the, these problems cannot continue as such that is being really imposed on Iran. On the other hand, they have to realize that there are common interests between Iran and the Arab world. And that's why I think that some great effort has to be made alongside with the, the position taken by Iran to stop its intervention to really extend the hand to Iran. Fouad Senora, pleasure having you on the Newsmakers.